tie it around to prevent uh, the death. So what they did was they had this, these white cloths around their necks as uh, bandages. And um, over time, people, it, it became a mark of honor to go, you know, after the Crusades, you went home to the France, Italy, one of the ten countries, two of the ten countries that had Crusaders, and you continued to wear this cloth, this bandage around your neck, as evidence that you were indeed a crusader, a soldier, that went to fight. And you did not have to pay taxes, you were given all kinds of privileges in society because you were a crusader, and that's evidence of that you wore the bandage. Uh, then people started wearing them who never went, went to war. They just pretended, you know, and wanted to get the benefits, and that was a problem. But over time, uh, this privileged status was given to government officials who wore the white bandage of the crusaders, but in a very short, uh, short way. Uh, clergy, priests, wore this as well. This is actually, in fact, the, the uh, clerical uniform of the clergy of the uh, 13th, 14th centuries when, when the parliamentary system was devised. And um, if you were a landowner, a wealthy landowner, you would have, uh, you know, not only would you have your own chapel in your castle, because when you were that wealthy, you didn't go to church, the church came to you. When the Tsar of Russia was sick, church came to him. They actually set up shop in his room when he was sick and held the services because he insisted on hearing the entire daily office which could last up to seven hours. He signed documents during church services in Tsar Russia. Um, so you not only had uh, a chapel in your, in your castle but you had priests who were your servants and because you were a landowner then you had to have legal documents which were all written in Latin. So, the, because the priests were all trained in Latin, because the services were in Latin, they looked after all the, the Latin writing. That's where the term clerical work comes from. Clark or clerical means priest. Since the priest did Latin, it was paperwork. To this day, paperwork means clerical work. And uh, the tricorn had again the symbol of the Trinity, which meant that this man was, uh, had, was protected by God. And don't shoot the messenger. It comes from the time of, of uh, Prince John, King John, in the, in, the, in the Valley of Runnymede, when the speaker was appointed on the part of the barons to go and ex you know, explain their grievances. Now the king, uh, in those days, if he didn't like what you had to say to him, he could take out his sword and kill you, or he could order to have you killed on the spot. Now to avoid that, the speaker's role was devised, uh, whereby the speaker was disinterested, he had no uh, political position. His job was simply to hear the baron's uh, uh, gripes at a distance and then go up to the king, or perhaps at a distance, tell the king what their gripes are. The king was prevented from killing the speaker because, you know, I mean, don't shoot the messenger. He was just the messenger. He, had, he, wasn't, uh, he wasn't one of the barons. So he had a protective role. And when he sat in the chair, what they did was, in the chapel next to Westmin uh, uh, Westminster uh, Palace, they actually put the speaker's chair on top of a, the, where the former altar was. And when you see members go into the house, they will bow to the speaker's chair. In actual fact, they're not bowing to the speaker's chair or to the speaker or to anything that's upstairs. They're bowing to that altar spot in, in Westminster where the first speaker, speaker's chair was placed. Because even though the altar was taken, the spot is still consecrated, still sacred, and you would bow to it. As you would bow to any, in any uh, Catholic or Orthodox or Anglican church, Lutheran church as well, you would bow to the altar. So that's where that tradition comes from. Uh, and Speaker Lenthal, in 1636, uh, uh, they were preaching sedition against King Charles I, King Charles the Martyr, and Charles I did something maybe he shouldn't have. He barged into the House of Commons, told Speaker Lenthal to get out of his seat, and took over the speaker's seat. Uh, at that point, the Great Rebellion, the Civil War in England began. But Speaker Lenthal refused to hand over the five MPs who had pre sedition against the king. And even though he knew that he could have been killed by the king, by order of the king, on the spot. But he didn't, and, and, and he didn't survive. To this day, speakers wear the uniform of Speaker Lenthal to show that the defense of the rights and privileges of Parliament was the voice of the people. And when the Queen goes into the British Parliament, she always, by tradition, knocks three times and asks for permission to come into the Parliament, permission which is always granted. Now, how many monarchies do we have in Canada? We have a brother. The Queen is the Queen of Canada and the Queen of each of the ten provinces. The Speaker's chair is actually the throne of Ontario. And 
Because you're going to start at 2 o'clock. You want to do something before? Before. He or she, he or she, the first one to walk up the stairs. I mean, very nice. You can sit in the speaker's chair, they sit in the throne of Ontario. And that case, uh, King George okay, was sitting as King of Ontario. Queen Elizabeth is the Queen of Ontario, not just the King of Canada. Queen of Ontario was the King of Ontario. Queen of Ontario was the King of Ontario. And in the press, though, it looks at a government that you can't believe symbolizes the Ten Provinces, but also the Ten Commandments. That's why there is a strong resistance to the Ten Commandments. Okay. And that's why it's a strong resistance to the Ten Commandments. Okay. Okay. Uh, they could, but there is that symbolism of the Ten Commandments and the Ten Commandments. So this is actually a, a chair from the 19th century, from the speaker, who's obviously a French background because he has a fleur de lis on top. Because you have a card in the way you want. And this is uh, from a speaker of the 1930s, at the height of the Depression. And uh, he has obviously a British background, the crown of St. Edward features prominently, but both have the crest of Ontario, which is very old, um, and, and very traditional and very old. Uh, again, the speakers is the speaker's office. Uh, we have a room here where we have set up shop as a kind of a dummy parlor for students. So they appoint uh, a speaker and they actually go through the motions of pretending to be the parliament. Uh, and this is almost like exactly what it looks like upstairs in the different hats, the speaker's chair. Uh, and even the mace, the copy, the copy of the mace. Stands, on the second base, I should say. And here is where the, uh, the various uh, uh, students would set the pages. Uh, 1867, all these carvings were done. Uh, in, in th at that time, people were taking uh, actual um, cartoon figures. Let's see if they have any here. I don't see any on the, on the photographs. But cartoon figures of Queen Victoria, Lord Palmerston, an Israeli, and they're actually carving these cartoon figures into the wood to uh, allow them to be immortalized, but also to have something, uh, some sort of a design to put, uh, to make the carvings interesting. And of course, the entire ceiling was ablaze with these maple leaves, which eventually some genius ordered to be painted over in white. And now they're slowly taking, like, taking the white paint off. It's a very painstaking and expensive and slow process, but they are doing it. A lot of things, uh, which we have here were covered up with carpet or other things, and then subsequently were, were forgotten that we had. Uh, and as well, like like this carpet, it actually runs throughout the building now, and it uh, also we have uh, mosaic uh, floors upstairs, so beautiful mosaic floors. They were covered up by carpet for years, but they took them off and realized, wow, why would we want to cover this up? Who covered this up in the beginning? But normally the color is green, because that's the original color. Again, the color of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I worked for this speaker, uh, Mr. Carr. He was actually, I did some research on his family background, which I love to do, and he actually was descended from uh, James Carr, who was the assistant to King James I, uh, the favorite, and that because the, ki the king favored him as his favorite advisor, uh, James Carr got a lot of trouble. Got into a lot of trouble. Now, Carr comes from Kyrios in Greek, which means Lord. <laughs> I, I love this. I, and to have, a, to have my own audience. Hey. <laughs> so I went to Multimedia Nova. Uh, I think Frank's going to participate in a debate. Great. They offered the invitations. If they don't show up, Frank will just debate himself. Yeah, that'll, that'll speak volumes. I think we got to get going now because yeah. we got to get ready. Yeah. But. Uh,